Hey, my name is Tracy Obolsky from Rockaway Beach Bakery. Quiche Lorraine is awesome, eggy, custardy goodness, almost like think frittata in a pie shell with delicious, salty, thick cut bacon and nice, sharp, semi stinky Gruyere cheese. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our crust. I have some cake flour here and I have some sugar, just regular sugar, kosher salt. You wanna make sure it's kosher. If it's that really fine stuff, it may end up being too salty. We have our unsalted butter cut into nice little even cubes. And we also have our Crisco. So it's super important that the butter and the shortening and the water are super cold. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut in the cold butter. So I like to use my hands with this. You kind of get in there and then it's hard to overwork it. So I'm gonna take the butter and I'm gonna kind of smush it with my fingers. What we're doing is we're flattening the butter and eventually this butter later on when it bakes is gonna create that void and that's how the flakiness is created. I love eating quiche. Uh, it's good cold, it's good hot, it's good for breakfast. You can eat it like pizza on the go. We're looking for kind of a, like a shaggy consistency. So you can see there's some larger chunks, some smaller. It's a little bit more yellow looking. So we are gonna add our shortening, which is also very cold. And now we wanna work a little bit quicker or quickly. I'm gonna bust it up into some pieces. And now we're gonna do the same thing. You could tell where the shortening is because it's a lot colder. It doesn't look like a dough yet. It's not coming together. If you start to make this and it's starting to look like dough, you wanna just add that water. Um, or you could stick it in the fridge and just hold off. But this is not wrong. This looks really good. So we're gonna finish this awesome pie dough for our awesome quiche, Lorraine. It's my mom's name, by the way. It's kind of ironic that I'm making quiche Lorraine. So now we have our really cold water. I'm gonna put it in all at once. I don't wanna over mix it. So now I'm gonna do a gentle pressing motion. And it's okay if it's a little shaggy looking. When it chills in the fridge, it's actually gonna hydrate itself. All right, I took a bowl scraper to kind of help myself out here. This recipe makes two discs of dough. So I'm gonna take our finished dough, which looks really awesome, and I'm gonna just cut it in half. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shape these pieces of dough in circles because eventually they're gonna get rolled out to circle form. So we're gonna wrap our dough in plastic wrap and give it a little smush. We're done with our dough and now it's gonna chill. So we have our pie dough. Uh, it's been chilling and then I pulled it out a little bit so it can temper. I like to roll it on a piece of parchment paper and I don't even use flour. So you wanna put your tempered pie dough in the center of the parchment. And then I'm actually just gonna use this piece of plastic that I was wrapped in, because, you know, Mother Earth. And you wanna keep rotating it a little bit when you bang it, just so it kinda like evenly disperts it. Disperts, sure. Then I'm just gonna start in the middle. I'm gonna work outward. So we have kind of a nice long oblong shape. And once again, just like when I was pounding it, I'm gonna rotate it a little bit. And you wanna try to keep your parchment nice and flat. If it kind of bunches up underneath and may get caught in the dough and then you'll have holes in the shell and then you'll have quiche all over the place. And this dough is beautiful. It's nice and kind of marbled looking and that's what you want. That means you're gonna have nice flaky, nice flakiness. Flaky pie dough, flaky brain. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna check this against my nine inch pie shell. Boom, and notice I'm checking it this way and not this way because you need to cover the whole thing. So we wanna chill this before we shape it um, for about 30 minutes in the fridge. All right, so we have our pie dough. It's been chilling. Now we are ready to shape it. So I'm gonna take some butter spray. And at this point, you can kind of center your pie shell or your pie tin uh, right in the middle. And then you do a little flip. And this should peel right off. So now I'm gonna gently just kind of press the pie dough into like the corner edges of the shell. Our shell is nice and in there in like the corners of the pie shell. I'm gonna take scissors and I'm just gonna trim the edges. I'm gonna leave about a quarter inch border around. So now I'm gonna go around and do the crimping. Finger down, pinch to the right. Finger down, pinch to the right. Okay, so this looks good. So we do wanna chill this one more time before baking it. Chill it for about 30 minutes in the fridge. If you don't have time, you can put it in the freezer for a little bit, but we want it nice and cold before going in the oven. So I'm gonna chill this bad boy up. 
Okay, so we have our pie shell that's been chilling. So now we are going to blind bake it. So I have baking beans. If you don't have baking beans, you can use actual dried beans. I have parchment paper, uh, a nice square of it. What I'm gonna do is I am going to cut it in a circle, cut accordingly. So I'm just gonna gently press it in there. I have my baking beans. I'm gonna get those bad boys in there. We're gonna blind bake our quiche shell in the oven at 350 for 45 minutes. Once the 45 minutes is up, we're gonna take the shell back out of the oven and then we're gonna dock it with a fork, give it a little egg wash, and then put it back in the oven. What that does is it fully bakes the bottom. Our key shell is ready out of the oven. We're gonna let it cool while we get our fillings ready. So first I'm gonna start with the bacon. Um, you can use pancetta or some nice thick cut bacon. This is awesome bacon. So you wanna cut this in nice lardons. Uh, anywhere between a quarter inch and a half inch thick. And then I'm just gonna go down. We're gonna cook our bacon on medium high heat. Okay, so while our bacon is eventually cooking, uh, we're gonna grate some Gruyere cheese. Ooh, I hear it sizzling. I'm gonna shred it on the thick, the thick side. The only side you ever freaking use on these things. If it comes with a rind, that means you got good Gruyere, uh, but you do wanna take that off. So my bacon's finally cooking. I'm gonna give it a little zhuzh. And you just wanna stir it every so often so it's nice and crispy all over. So I got my Gruyere cheese grated. It's really funny, I, I own a bakery and I wake up really early. I should have this crazy breakfast, but in fact, I never eat breakfast. I actually don't eat anything until like one o'clock in the afternoon when I'm like, oh shit, my blood sugar's here. Somebody give me a Snickers bar. I'm gonna get hangry. So I just grab quiche and I eat it cold like pizza. And that's what keeps me alive at the bakery for the most part. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a big breakfast person. I, I feed a lot of people breakfast, but I don't actually eat breakfast. So I have three large eggs. We're gonna make our liquid filling. The word quiche is actually um, a French word derived from a German word, kuchen, that means cake. So you learn something new every day. So our bacon looks pretty good. So I'm gonna remove it from the heat and I'm gonna use a slotted spoon to just take it out of that fat. Uh, so I have the three eggs and now I'm gonna add the half and half. First, I'm gonna pop my egg yolks. That makes the mix a little bit easier. I'm slowly gonna add this while mixing. I use half and half in the quiche because then you only have to buy one thing. And then we got the salt and the pepper. <laughs> All right, so we have our quiche shell. First, we're gonna start with our Gruyere cheese. It's a lot of cheese, but it's really good with a lot of cheese. So I, I would stick with it. And you wanna kinda sprinkle it and spread it out nice and evenly. Next, I'm gonna take my bacon lardons and I'm gonna carefully place them all around so they're nice and even. Now we're gonna pour the egg custard part into it, get it in the oven, and soon we're gonna be eating it. So I have a strainer. This kind of takes out any like weird membranes in the eggs. You know when you crack the eggs and there's like those little weird things, this takes that all out and then also make sure that this, the filling is that much smoother. I'm gonna pour most of it, but not all of it. You want it to be as full as possible, but we also don't want to make a mess and we want this to be successful quiche learning. I'm gonna slide it into the oven uh, so it's sitting on the rack and then I'm gonna come back and just pour that last bit of filling. We are gonna fill this bad boy up to the top. So pour it as much as you can. And we want big, beautiful quiche. So I'm gonna gently slide it in and you don't want to wiggle it too much. You don't want all that filling to come out. And also don't slam the oven because you don't want it to pour out the sides. What we're looking for with the quiche when it's done, we want it to be slightly jiggly. So you're gonna give it a little wiggle and it should jiggle like jello. So our quiche is cooked. We baked it at 350 for 45 minutes. We're gonna let it cool to room temperature and then we get to eat it. Uh, as far as how to eat quiche, it's however your heart desires. It's really good warm, um, but it's also good cold. So it's however you're feeling, it's however how much time you have. When you cut it, you just wanna cut straight down through the crust. You could almost feel it separating. If your piece is not cutting, coming out, just kinda cut through a little bit to separate it. I'm like, I can cut a nice one. Let me butcher this quiche that I spent all day making. Oh yeah, look at that. Quiche Lorraine.
Mm hmm So good. It's salty from the bacon, so creamy from that filling with the half and half in it. So it's creamy, salty, cheesy, light, fluffy, deliciousness. Good for breakfast, good for lunch, good anytime. For the recipe for the quiche Lorraine, click the link below or you can come visit me out at Rockaway Beach Bakery.